Okay, this is the first time I'm recording on this camera, so I hope everything goes good, but we have a 1992 Marlin um, speedboat. It's a 24 foot, and I'm going to leave the front cover on because the cover's a real bugger to put on. But anyway, uh, what we're doing is, I looked on YouTube, there's no YouTube videos on installing or wiring selection valve for dual tanks. So I'm gonna do a video on this, but we're gonna do a walk around. Um, she's got an OMC 454 and it has a King Cobra in it. I'm rewiring it, put a new ignition system in there uh, putting in a new switch for the selection valve. I, before I started this job, I knew nothing about how a selection valve, basically how a selection valve worked on a one post. We're going to go through that here soon. Um, and do another walk around. The sad thing about this boat is it was left out in the elements without a cover on it and I've had to deal with a lot of corrosion issues with it, uh, wiring, um, and somebody put the wrong carburetor on it, it was just flooding. They put a 850 uh, double pumper, non-progressive holly, it was dumping fuel in there, wasn't getting any um, power to the the electric choke, the choke was closed, and it was just drowning in fuel. And uh, I have since replaced all the wiring cap rotor. I've got another Holly Fort. I got a seven. I got a 750 CFM marine carburetor vacuum secondaries. This will not only the performance will go up on it, but it'll pick up some fuel mileage too. And we won't be drowning the poor motor in, in fuel. I haven't tried to start this yet because I've had to go completely through the fuel system. I had to fabricate fuel lines. Um, ah, this one's been, this boat has just been absolutely horrendous because it was really, um, it was really abused. Very little maintenance on it. Well, I don't know what the, who the shop was that put the 850 double pumper uh, non-progressive. Non-progressive meaning that the front, the secondaries and the primaries open at the same time and just dump fuel down and motor. It's great for race, but for a boat, for a cruising boat, no. You don't put that kind of carburetor on this engine. There is the selection valve and before I started this job, I had no clue how the selection valve works. It's only got one post on it. And uh, we're going to go through that when I go back into the shop. How these systems work and uh, how the switches work to switch things back and forth. To not only switch each tank, but each tank will have its own circuit for the fuel gauge. But you only have to use one fuel gauge. And like I said, before I started this, I had no clue how this worked. So we're going to go into how the system works when I go back in the shop. I forgot to uh, show a close up of this. This is my wiring hell. I mean, I'm okay at wiring. I'm no expert. I mean, I'm decent, but I'm no expert. But this is not for the faint of heart. Um, and I'm not going to go into the the tear down how to pull this thing out but in order this I had to put a new ignition switch in there in order to do the ignition switch or any other control switches you have to pull the panel out and you have to disassemble the steering to get it out because the steering goes over the panel and this thing was like I said was left out in the elements and uh, yeah it's a mess this has been a real stressful job. It'll be worth it when I get done, but it's been kicking my butt. Okay, um, here is the valve, the new selection valve. 
is a standard valve and the part number is FV1. Now I looked and I cannot find a 3 8 diameter fuel selection valve. This is 5 16 so uh, it's on the suction side not the pressure side so I'm just going to put two clamps on there for to double seal it so we have no leakage but this is the way I've got it wired I got my snap on jump pack positive here goes over here to my start button remote start button and then this will go on here for your positive and then of course this goes over here and, in the, and it's ground negative on your body so you can listen to it when I actuate it see the old one wouldn't do that it wouldn't even move uh, basically there was one line open and uh, the other tank you know couldn't get any fuel from it and it actually just went it went bad the boat had been sitting since 2018 okay. so I've got this fuel line hooked to the bottom this is your this is your outlet here this is your inlet for your right and left tanks so I've got no power to it at all. So grab a hose, blow on it. So with the valve closed with no power, your inlet's going to be to the left if the valve is installed like this, which it is into the boat. So I'm going to keep this in perspective with the installation of the boat. Now I'm going to apply voltage and then we're, we're, you're going to hear the plunger inside activate. It's going to close this port, open up this port. Close. Open. Close. And that's the way it works. Okay, I know this looks really confusing, so I'm just going to break it down into parts. Um, a week ago, I had no clue uh, about all this. I just had to kind of figure it out with the instructions from the valve. Um, the one thing I had a lot of problems finding was this six pin, two position rocker switch I could not find I spent days here trying to find one of these switches and what I ended up doing was I had to go down to AutoZone and buy another rocker switch that on and off was a mo momentary. This one I got here was spring loaded and it wouldn't work. It cannot be spring loaded. It has to, you know, two way switch. Otherwise, it won't work. I spent a week trying to find that switch. What I ended up doing last night is I got this one and it was a seven pin and luckily these things have locking tabs on there and you can pull these locking tabs back and the switch will come apart and this part of it here only goes in one way because they're notched but what you have to do is you have to put the rocker switches into these right here in the bottom they go down and this goes into this 
little groove right there. And the best way to do it, take this spring loader part here, set your rocker switch down, and they go just like that on both sides. And then you have to sit this in here and hold it. It's like so. And then you have to line it up here and just snap it into place. But the only way I could find a switch, get this to work, is the contacts are different between the spring loaded ones and the momentary switches and the on and off ones, the two way switches. I switched the contacts last night and they worked. So, uh, so before you do one of these jobs, you've got to find one. And I wish I had a part number for you. You probably have to go to Amazon, but you want the switch, two-way switch, non-momentary, momentary spring loader one. It's going to come back up. They use them on RV slide outs and stuff. That's the one you don't want. Okay. So. Here's your right fuel tank. This is your ground. Okay. Fuel line goes out, comes out, and you, you can go either way, doesn't matter. But the way I've got this diagram done, it goes to goes to this inlet and then this is the one that's energized this is the one that gets the 12 volts from the switch okay that opens it up and allows fuel to go in so that one goes from the switch the other one here will go over to the left tank so that one goes over here to the left tank we've got the outlet here for that switch for the, the valve fuel line goes in there. Now, here's your sending unit for each tank. Sending unit goes to so we'll go the right tank, the sending unit plugs into here. Okay. And then the left tank, it plugs into here. Right there. And then this right here, the middle terminal goes over to your fuel gauge right there the other side of the fuel gauge is 12 volts from your ignition so I turn the ignition on put 12 volts to your gauge then your your signal from this tank from the sending unit is going to go here sending unit from the left tank is going to go here so when you switch the switch it's going to activate this terminal or this terminal and that's where you get the switching back and forth for your tanks so that that'll pick up your sit your very basically a variable resistor from each tank now that takes care of your sending units here that takes care of the fuel line fuel outlets here going to the valve and then that takes care of the fuel line going here to the other nipple okay so now we're going to do, we're going to power the valve. So here we are back to the valve. So 12 volts from the ignition goes to this terminal here. Okay. When you activate the switch over to here, that activates that terminal right there and that terminal right there will send 12 volts over here to your switch. That opens up your switch and allows fuel to come in from your right line. The other one, this is this one's open at all times, okay? So this terminal over here is not used.
This terminal right here is not used. It's blank. You don't hook anything to it because we don't have we don't need any power out of it because this valve is open all times. So that's pretty much how it works. So when you run out of fuel over here, let's say you run out of fuel at a left tank, you're going to switch over to the right tank. All you do is flip the switch and it closes this right here, closes that, that valve, closes, shuts that off, opens up, opens up the plunger in here, and opens up this valve, allows the fuel to come into here, and this goes out to your carburetor. So I hope I've explained this. This is 12 volts in from your ignition. And that terminal is right there. That's 12 volt from the ignition. You turn the key on, this is going to get 12 volts to it. So I hope I've explained it to you. Like a week ago, I had no clue this was working. And your this is really important. Your fuel tanks have to be grounded. You got you got to take ground off your battery. You got to have a real good ground on your tank. If you don't have a ground on your tank, uh, your sending unit won't work because that's part of the circuit. This is the variable resistor. If this is not grounded, your sending sender won't work on your tank. It it, it won't work. So it's make sure you've got a good ground, good clean ground on both tanks, going directly to your battery um, on the negative post, or if you see a good junction for a ground you can tie it into there just as long as you got a nice clean ground but that is very important and make sure your terminals on your your uh, sending unit are clean no rust um, put a little grease or disilica on those because of the moisture um, I can't think of anything else on this um, I think that's it. This right here is just your switch. I just put a toggle switch, not a auger switch, so I don't want that confusing. But, but, I mean, you can run a toggle switch if you just got a regular hole in your dash. But where you've got uh, you you broke a setup for a rocker switch, then of course you want to go with a rocker switch. But I mean, you can get the same style of switch in a toggle switch. But I didn't want to drill a hole in a dash since this already had a rocker switch in it, but I wasn't going to put this boat back together with the old switch in there. Now here I'll show you the old switch. Here's the old switch. You look at the front of this, like I said, this boat was uncovered for a very long time, was exposed to the elements, the hole underneath the both seats in the front, the tracks on are nothing but solid rust, but you can see how corroded that, that switch is. I was not going to put this back together with that old switch. There's no way. Got a new valve, put the old switch back in there. I spent a week trying to find that rocker switch. I could not find it. I had to butcher two switches just to come up with the correct switch that I needed. So. I'm hoping my illustration is kind of simplified things. Another important thing is to have a good ground, very good ground on your valve. You've got to have a good ground. Not the same thing with the sending units for the fuel. You've got to have a good ground for your, um, your selection valve. Make sure it's clean, no corrosion. You know, hook it to the motor, a nice clean, if they got a junction box there or where a bunch of negative are tied together and tie into there. Use nice clean wire, new terminals. Uh, don't scrimp on this. You've got to have a good ground. Same thing with the positive. You've got to have a nice clean setting. Put dielectric grease on this too because this is going to be exposed to moisture. Um, I hope that simplifies things. I know it's confusing at first. I was confused. I didn't know how it worked. So I hope that helps you. Um, we'll go on to the job here in a little bit. One thing I forgot to add is uh, they recommend that you run a one amp fuse to this um, terminal here. Um, 
for the, the fuel selection valve. This is the instructions you will get with the valve and it's uh, yeah, it's a little confusing to say the least but if you look at it, analyze it and break it down uh, it, it's actually not that bad. When you first look at it it's really confusing. So that's the reason I wanted to write it on the box and kind of do a illustration. I wasn't going to do this but decided not I woke up in the middle of the night last night decided to is panel can't pull it all the way out but I can pull it back it's just on these hooks right here there's like two screws uh, one screw up there and one screw back here but um, there's a sitting unit so what I'm gonna do is I check my ground this is the way you check your ground you have to have a good ground for the sitting unit Hook your test light on, on there just like that. Bring it over here. And wherever you have a positive. That's right, it's so shaky. See, I got a good ground. It lights up, so we're good on the ground. So now we're gonna do a continuity test up to the switch from the sinew, see if we got continuity. If you look right there, you can see the corrosion on there. That right there will kill your ground and your fuel gauge won't work. So it's real important to clean these up, put new terminals on it, which I'm going to do. I'm not going to go through there, but you need to see the corrosion on there. Very important, you got a nice clean contact for corro your uh, ground and your fuel gauge. Okay, so we've got an orange with a tracer on it, black tracer here for the, well we'll just call it the starboard tank or the right tank um, and then I've wiring down into my voltmeter here and I put it on ohms for continuity test and then I've run this, had to run an extension run it up there the orange stripe where the switch goes now This is where you want to check continuity if you got any broke wires. Just make sure you got a good connection. Turn this on. And I've got continuity. So we've got a good circuit going from the fuel sending unit up to the switch for the uh, fuel selection switch. Okay, I don't know if that recorded or not, but anyway. I did away with a spade connection. Just went with an eyelet direct to the mounting flange put a new eyelet there took a wire wheel to it that's the way you want it and then I put a new terminal on the uh, sending unit took a wire wheel to that see same thing just corrosion here I do away with this um, spade connection and just go direct with an eyelet it's a lot better ground but you can see this side's not as bad as the other, but it still needs cleaned up. You got corrosion here. This will really, really affect your um, fuel gauge. So we're going to clean this up, replace the terminals like the other side. I won't show it, but I just wanted to show, show it to you. This is what you look for when you're uh, going through your wiring for your anything, just corrosion. Replace those ends. It's cheap insurance. Okay. Got hooked up, hooked on the ohm meter, runs over to the orange wire, and then I'll show you what I have these numbered. You get these little numbered tags. I'll show you that in here in a little bit. But number those tags and write it out on your paper. There's the finished product, all cleaned up, new terminals. Hopefully, sending unit's good. Okay, I got the new valve in. Uh, I put new ends on the on the uh, wires. I got to put some wire ties in tomorrow. Um, I hooked the um, you know here. Okay, I'm going to turn the uh, switch on, and you'll hear that little valve in there click. So 
then you, when it clicks, you know it works. This has been one of the most difficult jobs I've done on a boat. Not the worst, but one of the difficult ones. Um, total learning. I had no clue what, how to do the, in any of this. But the one thing I suggest you do, hook a hose to it and blow through it. You see where it goes, and when you turn the valve on, this opens up this port. So, facing the boat, we want to hook up the starboard line to this one, okay? The right hand, and then your port side over here. So, I'm done for the day. I'm, I'm beat. I haven't had a uh, day off and uh crap way over two weeks okay it's been a couple days since the video I came in last yesterday and cleaned everything out in here picked up tools gave me some room um the dash is back in but it's temporary got the wiring hooked up i'd highly recommend when you go if, you, if you've done some wiring and you're gonna go start the boat, leave everything loose in case you have a smoke show, because you're gonna have to tear it all back apart again. But I would not, if you have it verified that the condition of the wiring is in good condition, then leave the screws out so you can pull it back out. But everything's hooked up up there. Um, I charged the battery last night, and I gotta probably charge this one over here. I think I'll go ahead and hook up both batteries. And I want, did want to show you the carburetor that was on this thing. Okay, here's that Holly double pumper. Uh, you can see right here, it's not vacuum secondaries. It's all mechanical. As soon as you open up the primaries, the secondaries are gonna open up. It's an 850 and the choke was closed all the time. There was no power going to the choke housing. I mean, this port, it was just drowning in fuel. Um, and the customer thinks a dealer might have put this thing on, but he's not sure. He bought this boat from a dealer. It's fairly new. These are real expensive. I just checked the MSRP on them, and they're just about $1,200. But I have no idea why somebody would take a race carburetor and stick it on a performance cruise boat uh, it's just beyond me they definitely didn't know what they were doing okay here's a close-up of the uh, gauges new switch uh, ignition switch put in and then this is the new switch um, I had the butcher between two switches um, for the uh, fuel selection and you know, every every gauge is going to be different, but if you're not real good with wiring or not familiar with wiring and can't do major wiring, uh, most of these old boats, they are not going to have a schematic. You just kind of memorize your color codes and just kind of figure it out. Um, this one, however, <clears throat> this is a setup it had on the back of the um, ignition switch. You can see all these battery wires have been piggybacked and uh, it's just not a good way to go. Oh, there it is. Get it out of the light. So, what I like to do
what I like to do is put together these junction boxes for the battery and so this is bat this is battery voltage here this is coming from the battery in the back this goes to the ignition switch down the bottom but instead of piggybacking all those wires uh, which causes a lot of corrosion uh, amperage breakdown you're not getting the proper voltage I like to come in with the junction boxes just like to see how I got it that now come in with the battery and then this battery off the junction box it's a lot cleaner you don't have all the wiring going into the ignition switches and um, it's just a lot cleaner design um, let me look at this versus that you've got one out one wire coming into the ignition one 10 gauge wire off of that junction box to feed the ignition versus this I mean it's a no-brainer and these little junction boxes you can get them at Home Depot or any automotive um, and if you get one that's too long you can take a saw and cut them like this and I only need uh, two junctions it's got two extra junctions on it but just make sure if you do this you got to loop put a wire in there and loop it otherwise the other junction will be dead here's another thing I had to uh, fabricate was this fuel line I don't know if you can see it coming down but I had to fabricate that fuel line for that dual inlet um, for that holly. Um, it, it it's a bugger but anybody I'm not didn't go into the situation on making the line because there's plenty of YouTube videos on that on bending flaring lines but uh, yeah it's uh, I had to make a custom line